Hello friends, welcome to Inside Text. This is a platform to learn about power transmission elements and its control system. In the substation equipment series, today we are going to learn about battery charger and how to learn the drawing, how to learn to read the drawing of a battery charger. So we have already completed about the float charger drawing in a pre previous video. You can get the links in the description box and today we are going to learn about boost charger drawing reading we have made many multiple videos on battery charging discharging how to do basic maintenance of a battery set some basics about battery charger uh, you can get all of these links in the description box below so friends we know that in any control room the control panels are working on dc supply right so the battery charger has the purpose of supplying dc to the control panels and as a backup whenever there is no ac in the control room we have as a backup battery set that will provide dc to all the control panels okay so the battery charger has two purpose to provide dc for the control panels and also to continuously charge the battery set right so let us see how this is done and how to read the drawing so this is the control panel this is the battery set and this is the battery charger so it has as we have discussed two purpose one is to continuously uh, supply dc to the control panels and other is to continuously charge this battery set it has uh, three sections boost float and dc db so we have already discussed about float section in our previous video and today we will be discussing about the boost section so we have already seen in the basics that from the ac supply we have a transformer that transforms voltage into desired ac okay after that we have a rectifier that converts ac into dc voltage and then uh, continuously we have a dc going to the control panel and also charging this battery set now let us see for in details further so as we know in any drawing if you see for any battery charger we have a provision for a, a ac supply so we have marked over here r y and b phase and neutral okay so this marking indicates ac supply going into the transformer transforming into desired lower voltage stepping down and then using this acsr rectifier circuit we have the output of dc okay and it is going to the control panels and also charging our battery sets so we have already seen the drawing of a float charger this is a very common drawing you can get it for any of the battery charger mix so we have already seen in detail about float charger and today we will see about the boost charge boost section of this battery charger so let us get started we have ac supply three phase ac supply okay and from switch number sw26 the supply will move forward into the ac and go into the ac bus okay and after that it through the switch one we can turn on the boost charger okay and from switch one we are having the provision for this fuse so as we have seen that behind the door of the boost charger you will get the complete circuit of the boost charger okay so when you open the door and inside this section you can find all the circuitry of the boost charger so this is the switch one that we have talking about okay so if this is on you can turn on the boost charger after that we have this fuse fs123 and neutral link so this is fuse 1 2 3 and neutral link and as we discussed in the previous video also uh, about this fuse we are having this electronic circuit that will continuously supervise the protection of this fuse so if there is any fuse failure also then this will be indicating it right then we are having this led okay so it will indicate 
the presence of all the three phase supply. After that, we are having a contractor. This contractor is working as a switch. We are using it because it is it will be having multiple usages. And if a switch is operated many times, possibility it of getting damage is more, right? So we have a contractor operating over here, right? And also it is working for higher ampere side, okay? So how is this contractor working? Uh, we can see that in the input, we are having this three-phase supply, okay? And on the other side, you can see there is an overload relay. So one of the contacts of overload relay is over here. Okay, so if the overload relay is operated, this contactor will not be operated, right? And you can see how to turn on this contactor that is using this switch SW2. If we turn on the switch SW2, okay, and if, okay, the coil is charged, then we have one more provision to charge that coil that is RL4. So, you can see one of the contacts of RL4 is over here. Okay. So, it is connected to the phase supervision relay. What is the purpose of phase supervision relay is to continuously check if all the three phases are present in the supply. Okay. Or if there is mismatch in the phase sequence, then this contact will not be operated and in turn it will not charge the coil of this contactor. Right, and so the contactor will not operate. So all of these provision protections are given to charge the coil of this contactor. Now, when will this contactor operate? Is when the switch is closed, when the phase sequence is complete. Okay, then if the fuse is all right, and if the overload relay is not operated, if all these conditions are satisfied, then the coil will get charged and this contactor will pick up. Once the contactor will pick up, okay, so the supply will move forward from A, as A1, A2 and A3 into seat number 4. Now let us move forward. Now we have reached up to over here. So A1, A2 and A3 and this is the supply going inside the transformer. So, this is a boost transformer. So, voltage transformation will be from 440 volt AC to 150 volt. Okay. Because in as we know in the boost charging mode to charge the batteries, we want higher voltage levels. Okay. So, 150 volt and this will be going into this SCR circuit. So, and after from that, after the rectification, it we will get the DC. 110 volts and it will be going towards the battery charging okay so now over here you can see uh, in the battery charger behind the boost door panel we can see all the circuits for the boost charging and over here you can see the boost charger transformer so you can see this transformer is bigger in size compared to that of float okay because its output level is higher so uh, over here will be 100 and sorry 1440 volts ac and on the output you will get 150 volts ac okay and then we are having this SCR circuit as i told earlier also we have one diode one SCR one diode one SCR Okay, so this is this SCR rectification circuit. Along with that, we are having the DC fuse. So you can measure output voltage levels between this three and this three fuse. Okay. After that, we are having this uh, circuit for the removing of the ripples. Okay, so this is the filter circuit. It is having four capacitors as you can see over here and a fuse is also present. So after rectification, the DC will have some amount of ripples using this filter circuit. All the ripples will be removed and pure DC will be obtained. Then we are having this D4 diode also and we know this is the protection diode. So this will protect 
if there is any change in the supply or if there is reverse supply by mistake then this diode d4 will protect the circuit right after that we are having p1 and p2 and moving on to next sheet that is at sheet number 6 also we are having a different transformer over here small transformer is given so what is the purpose of this transformer is it will provide this uh, voltage for the firing angle okay for providing firing angle trigger so it will control this scr firing angle right so this provision for a separate transformer is also there inside this panel itself And this is the D4 diode that we are talking about. Now going on towards P1 and P2. So we have come to P1 and P2 over here. Uh, and you can see how the DC is flowing to charge the battery set. And we will see in detail how this is charging the battery set. So the first thing that we see is FS12 and FS13. So when you open the door over here, you can see FS12 and FS13. This is the DC fuse. Okay. And after that, we are having this BD1. That is the reverse blocking diode. Okay. So in case if there is a positive negative terminal exchange by mistake, then this will protect from the reverse flowing of the voltage. Okay. So this is BD1 and BD1 is over here right then there is one contactor okay uh, there is a provision in this charger either you can use it in the boost mode or you can use it in the float mode okay so let us see how it is done so this is the bd1 that i was talking about earlier right and we will talk about this switch first and then this switch so when you open this door, you will see this switch over here. So this is SW3 switch. Okay. So it has two options. One is for boost and two is for float. So whenever you want to use this charger, particularly boost charger in the float mode, then you can put the selector switch into two. Whenever your float mode is either off or it, due to any condition it is not working, then you can use this charger as the float charger also, right? So that's why it is called as float cup boost charger, okay? And the second switch, main uh, DC isolation switch is SW5. This is also available over here. After this, there comes this contactor, contactor 2. This contactor is basically op open when the boost charger is on. Okay, whenever the boost charger is on, this contactor, its contact will be open. Okay, and whenever the boost charger is off, the contactor will be closed. Okay, now when it is open, what happens is the direct voltages are going to the battery set and the battery set is getting charged by the voltage supply over here okay but what happens when this charger is off this charger is off this contactors will be closed okay and then you will see that the voltages will be going from the float charger to the panel also so this contactor is placed over here you can see on the upper side of this contactor, on the upper side, there are the connections of the boost output and on the lower side of this contactor, the connections are of float output, okay? The, whenever the boost mode is off, the float charger will charge the battery set, okay? So, let us see that. So now we have learned that our DC is coming through P1 and P2 through this fuse and through the boost it is going to the battery set. Okay. So uh, we also know that 
in case whenever there will be uh, float charger will be off and only boost is on then in that case through this bd2 that is a reverse blocking that we can also supply to the control panels okay and we know that this bd2 is connected to a tap cell okay so that is 40 second number cell and voltage across this will be sufficient enough to go into the control panels to 110 volts dc db right so this is how the flow will be for the float charges right so you can see through this vd2 we can now supply to the control panel also okay so now we have to understand something a concept that is called as a dropper diode that is available in the boost charger what happens is whenever the, we do not want our battery set to be charged by 140 volts okay say we want a battery set to be charged with some less voltage okay because we do not want the battery to be charged on by higher voltage or a voltage of the battery set are already controlled okay then what we want is uh, we want to reduce this voltage if we reduce the charging voltage then there will not be sufficient amount of voltage that is nearby 110 volts will not be maintained to be supplied to this bcdb or to the control panels in that case what we want is this kind of arrangement that is called as dropper diode so let us understand this arrangement this is a kind of diode bank in which there are seven diodes d d1 to 7 you can see seven diodes and each diode is this seven diode uh, combines together and forms one bank there is a provision of four such banks over here and each individual bank will allow a voltage drop of 5 volts. So you can see there are two switch available SW6 and SW7. First one is to turn on this dropper diode bank and the second is how much voltage you want to control. So you can see over here this is a dropper diode bank. Okay. And in this boost charger section, we are having this switch, uh, dropper diode on switch. Either you can turn on or turn off the switch and then selecting how much voltage drop, how much diodes you want to connect inside the boost charger. Okay. So this is how uh, this dropper diode concept works. Okay. So uh, in this video, we have learned about the boost charging circuit and in the previous video, we have covered the float charging circuit. Right? I hope uh, basic concepts about how to read the battery charger drawing uh, have been cleared. Many doubts might have been cleared. If you have any more doubts, you can always ask in the comments below. So we are completing our series on battery charger drawing over here. Let us know if you have any new topic that you want to learn. In, you can write in the comments and let us know. Keep watching our videos and encouraging us. Thank you.